Hey, my Mo brothers. Um, I decided to do this one in a little bit more of a, I say, educational manner rather than just be reading it off. So I've gone to the notebook and uh, with this article that uh, uh, Mr. Garcia actually sent me. You know, this is uh, originally through Zero Hedge, but it's actually from the Vineyard of the Saker. And Saker is actually a, I think Saker is actually Ukrainian. I'm not, I can't remember exactly, but uh, he's an expert on um, Eastern Europe and Europe, Eastern Europe and Russia. And I've been following him for like maybe, I would get grief, 2007, 2006, 2007. So probably about 13, 12, 13 years. And, um, uh, he is one of the um, few trusted alternative media uh, gurus that I actually really follow on a long-term basis. So if there's something that's going to come out that's um, not going to be in headlines and it's going to be anti-establishment, it's usually going to be some somebody like him. So without further ado, we're going to get into this. Uh, President... President Macron's amazing admission. I don't know whether the supposedly Chinese curse really comes from China, but whether it does or not, it most we most certainly are cursed with living in some truly interesting times. Iran won the first phase of the tanker battle against Anglo-Zionist Putin offered to sell Russian hypersonic missiles to Trump. And Putin has been trolling Western leaders a lot lately. God damn it. Okay. Let's get down to the meat of this video. He said, but the single most amazing event of the past couple of weeks was the absolutely astonishing speech French President Emmanuel Macron made in front of assembly of ambassadors. I could not find the full speech translated into English. I may have missed it somewhere. So I will post the crucial excerpts in French and translate them myself. If I find a full official translation, I will post it under this column ASAP. For the time being, this is the link to the full speech transcript in French. Let's begin with some of the most incredible excerpts emphasis added by me. Sorry for the long quote, but truly each word counts. And this is the speech in French. But here's the translation, and this is what's important. He said, here is my inform informal translation of these words. The international order has been shaken in an unprecedented manner. Above all, with, if I may so myself, the great upheaval that is undoubtedly taking place for the first time in our history. In almost every field and with a profound historic magnitude, the first thing we observe is a major transformation in the geopolitical strategic recomposition. We are undoubtedly experiencing the end of Western hegemony over the world. We are accustomed to an international order which, since the 18th century, rested on a Western hegemony, mostly French in the 18th century by the inspiration of the Enlightenment and then mostly British in the 19th century thanks to the Industrial Revolution and finally mostly American in the 20th century thanks to the two great conflicts and the economic and political domination of this power. Things change. And they are now deeply shaken by the mistakes of Westerners in certain crises, by the choices 
that had been made by Americans for several years. We're going to get back to this statement in my commentary. Which did not start with this administration, but which led to revisiting certain implications and conflicts in the Middle East and elsewhere. And to rethinking a deep diplomatic and military strategy and sometimes elements of solidarity that we thought were intangible for eternity. Even if we had constituted together in geopolitical moments that have changed. And then there is the emergence of new powers whose impact we have probably underestimated for a long time. China is at the forefront, but also the Russian strategy, which has, it must be said, been pursued more successfully in recent years. That's under Putin. I will come back to that. India that has, that is emerging, these new economies that are also becoming powers, they're talking about the BRICS, not only economic but political, and that think themselves, as some have written, as real civilizations. Civilizational, nation, civilizational state, which now come not only to shake up our international order, but also who come to weigh in the economic order and to rethink the political order and the political imagination that goes with it. With much dynamism and much more inspiration than we have. Look at India, Russia, and China. Those are the core of the BRICS. They have a much stronger political inspiration than Europeans today. They think about our planet with a true logic, true, a true philosophy, and an imagination that we have lost a little bit. See, now let's unpack these key element, key statements one by one. Great upheaval that undoubtedly t is taking place for the first time in our history in almost every field and profoundly in historic magnitude. Here Macron sets the stage with some truly momentous observations that will be discussed next in not only a major event, but one without precedent in history, whether French or European. Furthermore, it will be discussed next, affects almost every field with a huge historical implication. We are undoubtedly experiencing the end of Western hegemony over the world. When I read that, my first and rather infantile reaction was to exclaim, really? No kidding. Who would have thought? After all, some of us have been saying that for a long time, me included. But never mind that. What is important is that even a Rothschild puppet like Macron had to finally speak these words. Oh, sure, he probably felt as happy as the captain of the Titanic when he finally had to admit, finally had to order a general evacuation of this putatively unsinkable ship. But nonetheless, he did do it. From now on, the notion of the end of Western hegemony on this planet is no longer relegated to what leaders think of the empire and their propaganda machine like to call fringe extremists and has now fully entered the supposedly respectable and mainstream public discourse. This is a huge victory for all of us who have been saying the same things for years already. By the mistakes of Westerners in certain crises, by the choices that have been made by Americans for several years. Here, again, I feel like engaging some in some petty self-congratulation and want to say, I told you that too. But that would be really infantile, would it not? But yeah, the internal contradictions of Western materialism in general and of Anglo-Zionist capitalism specifically have been catching up with the Western world. And while eventual cat catastrophic crisis was inevitable, it sure is true that the Western leaders mostly did it to themselves. I, I said that years ago. They destroyed themselves with their own hand. At the very least, they dramatically accelerated the process. How long have I been saying that? In context, I would single out the few politicians for a nomination for a medal for exceptional service in the destruction of the Western hegemony over our long-suffering planet. Donald Trump 
and Barack Obama, of course, but also Francois Holland, Emmanuel Macron. Yes, he too, even now, changed, even though, even if he now changes his tune. Angela Merkel, of course. And then last but not least, the British Prime Minister since Margaret, since Margaret Thatcher, maybe with accommodation for Theresa May. Who knows? Maybe they were all KGB, GRU, SVR agents after all. Just kidding. The emergence of new powers whose impact we have probably underestimated for a long time. China's at the forefront, but also the Russian strategy, which has, it may be said, been pursued more successfully in recent years. Next, it's not only China. Russia, too, is a major competitor and a very successful one at that. Hence, the admission that in spite of all efforts of the Anglo-Zionist elites, not only did the empire not succeed in breaking Russia, but Russia has been very successful in defeating the Western efforts. To those interested, I highly recommend this article by John Helvig on the true state of the Russian economy. Finally, in military terms, Russia has achieved more than parity. In fact, I would argue that at least in terms of quality, the Russian armed forces are ahead in several crucial technologies hypersonic missiles, air defenses, electronic warfare. Even while she lags behind in other technologies, mostly truly obsolete things like aircraft carriers. But the most crucial, but most crucial is the political victory of Russia. Five years after the Euro maiden and the liberation of, China, liberation of Crimea from the Nazi yoke, the USA is far more isolated than Russia. It's comical, really. Real civilizational states would now come not only to shake up our international order. I have been speaking about a unique and very distinct Russian civilizational realm. In many of my writings, I writing and I am quite happy to see Macron using almost the same words. Of course, Macron did not only mean Russia here, but also India and China. Still, although Russian Although the Russian nation is much younger than the one of China or even more so India, thousands years of Russian civilization does deserve to be listed next to those two other giants of world history. And what is absolutely certain is that China and India could never build the new international order they want without Russia, at least not for the foreseeable future. In spite of all the very real progress made recently by Chinese armed forces, and to a lesser degree also Indian ones, Russia, mean, Russia remains a much stronger military power than China. And what Russia, China, India are is that they are all former empires which have given up on imperialism and who know, who know only aspire to be powerful but nevertheless normal nations. Just by their size and geography, these are uninvadable countries who all present a distinct model of development and who want a multipolar international order which would allow them to safely achieve their goals. In other words, Macron understands that the future international order will be dictated by Russia, China, Russia, India, and not by any combination of Western powers. Quite an admission indeed. Look at India, Russia, China. They have a much stronger political inspiration than the Europeans today. They think about our planet with a true logic, a true philosophy, an imagination that we have lost a little bit. I just said that. This is the core BRICS challenge to the empire. China and Russia have already established what the Chinese call a comprehensive strategic, strategic partnership of coordination for the new era. All right, I've never heard that term, but I will look it up. If they can now extend this kind of informal but extremely profound partnership, I think of it as symbolic to India next, then, give, then the BRICS will have a formidable future, especially after the Brazilian people give the boot to Bolsonaro and his U.S. patrons. 
Should that fail and should India choose to remain outside of this unique relationship, then the SCO will become the main game in town. And yes, Macron is spot on. China and especially Russia have a fundamental different worldview, unlike the Western one. Theirs, theirs does have a much stronger political goals. Macron used the word aspirations, a real philosophy and imagination, which the West has lost and not just a little bit. But I would argue completely. But one way or the other, for the first time in a thousand years, the future of our planet will not be decided anywhere in the West. Not in Europe, old or new, but in Asia, primarily by the Russian-Chinese alliance. As I explained here, the Anglo-Zionist Empire is probably the last one in history. Ooh, my goodness. The Anglo-Zionist Empire is probably the last one in history. Definitely the last Western one. Now, we should not be naive here. Macron did not suddenly find religion, grow a conscience, or suddenly become an expert on international relations. There is, of course, a cynical re reason why he is changing his tune. In fact, there are several such reasons. First, it appears that the on and off romance between Macron and Trump is over. Second of all, Europe is in f is uh, is in free fall socially. Econ Ooh, good look at this. Second of all, Europe is in free fall socially, economically, and of course politically. And with the total nutcase in power in London dealing with Brexit and Angela Merkel's apparent never-ending political agony, it is only logical for a French head of state to try to step in. Furthermore, while I have always said that Russia is not part of Europe, culturally and spiritually, Russia is a very much part of Europe geographically, economically and politically. There is no simple, there is simply no way for an, an imaginable alliance of European states to save Europe from its current predicament without Russian help. Like it or not, the fact is, like it or not, that is a fact irrespective of whether politicians or commentator X, Y, or Z realizes this or not. Macron probably figured out that the so-called Eastern Europeans are nothing but cheap prostitutes doing whatever Uncle Samuel wants them to do. Germany is collapsing under the weight of Merkel's brilliant imagination, brilliant immigration policy, while the UK under Bojo is busy trying to self-destruct at least as fast as the USA under Trump. Macron is right. If united, Russia and France could build a much safer Europe than the one we see slowly and painfully dying before our eyes today. But he is wrong if he thinks Russia can be reinvited back into the Anglo-Zionist sphere of influence. In that context, Putin's reply to the question of Russia is willing to return to the G8 is very telling. But he said that if the G7 wants to come back to Russia, Putin would welcome that. But he also added that the G7-8 is useless without, yes, you guessed it, China and India. It will be interesting to see if the current G7 will ever agree to mutate to a new G10, which would make Russia, China, India the most powerful bloc or voting group of this forum. I personally doubt it very much, but then they are becoming desperate, and Macron's words seem to be indicating that this option is at least being discussed behind closed doors. Frankly, considering how quickly the G7 is becoming utterly ir irrelevant, I expect it to be gradually phased out and replaced by the objectively much more relevant G20. Finally, there's Trump's efforts into getting Russia back into the G8, which are transparently linked to the current trade war and geostrategic competition between the U.S. and China. This offer is useless to Russia, just like the return to pace, but Russia does not want to needlessly offend anybody 
And that is why Putin did not publicly rebuff Trump or directly refuse to come to Miami. Instead, he approved of the general concept but offered a better way to go about it, typically Putin. Conclusion, McCone reads the writing on the wall. Whatever his motives to, to say what Whatever his motives to say what he said, Macron is no idiot, and neither are his advisors. Neither is this one-off thing. The French meant every word Macron spoke, and they are putting everybody on notice, including the Ukrainians, the U.S., the EU, and the Russians, of course. In fact, Macron has already invited Putin to participate in Normandy format meeting in Paris. In the very near future, if that meeting eventually does take place, this will mean that the organizers gave Putin guarantees that this will not just be the usual coffee clash and that some serious results will finally be obtained. That, in turn, means that somebody, probably the French, will have the unpleasant task of telling the Ukrainians that the party is over and they are now, that they now need to get off their act they now need to get their act together and start implementing the Minsk agreements, something which Zel Zelensky might or might not try to do. This is more about the Ukrainians. All right. Anyway. Now, I, <clears throat> I had suspected this back in like 1995-1996 and it got hinted at this in 2003 to 2005 uh, when the African nations walked out of the uh, Lisbon conference back in 2006 I looked at that so they had to pause it because they had a phone call but so what I really want to say is right after that, I knew that when the United States didn't get out of the Middle East, when they should have, that basically this is the end of, or the beginning of the end of uh, uh, white supremacy, at least white supremacy as we have known it. And even I didn't predict the speed of which it would collapse. Two thousand eight I knew that it was on the ropes. Two thousand nine I knew that it was shaky. Two thousand twelve when Putin made uh Barack Obama back down in um in Syria, I basically knew that it was over. Everything but the shouting. When Xi stood on the platform of the World Economic Forum and gave his speech basically announcing the game. I knew the pimp had basically moved in and basically white supremacy is over. Now, what we're dealing with is the residue of it. And I know I had a lot of kickback, a lot of pushback, a lot of people in my ear saying that this wasn't true. Because I'm just a regular dude. I'm a old black man in Los Angeles that nobody knows about or cares about. So what the fuck do I know, right? I always say you, between 18 months and three years, you'll find out that the, the headlines would actually validate me. And with this speech, Mr. McCrone has validated me. I'm going to say it here and now. White supremacy is over. Point blank. Period. And now white people are scrambling to hold on to what little power they have left. Point blank. Period. Rest in peace, white supremacy. You had your run. It's now over. Now it's time for new players to come in and take over. The new world order doesn't belong to you anymore. 
the new world order belongs to different players. After 200 years, 250 years dominated by white Western power, it's basically over. Foreign Affairs, Council of Foreign Relations have been saying that for the last two or three years. They've been saying it since 2017, that it's over, the party's over. And now the regular public is just now hearing about it. So I'm sure I'm going to get a lot of kickback, pushback, and ugliness in the comment section. So babe, I'm going to tell you right here and now. Respectful debate is fine. Respectful disagreement is fine. Any of that ugly shit in my comment section is going to get deleted immediately. So if you're going to make ugly comments, especially on this video, you're wasting your time and you're wasting time printing it unless you just got to get it out. But this is evidence that white supremacy is over. This is their admission, the white supremacy. And there's no greater arrogant bastards than the French. If the French say it and the French admit it, then this is what it is. But it's something that I've said for years. Even Saker, who's a white guy, has said it for years. So black folks, get yourself together. Start thinking a new way. Stop, stop leaning on that old ideology that you've been brainwashed into thinking. That there will never be any end to the domination of this globe by white people. If people always ask me, and I said this Saturday, what about white supremacy? White supremacy is no more than just white people getting their turn. Everybody gets a turn. Everybody gets a turn at bat. Everybody gets a turn to be on the stage. It's what you do with it. White, white people have come in, got their turn on stage as short, it is, short as it has been, and they screwed it up. Greed avarice and ego Hub hubris has been the name of the game for this for years but now that runs over and it's time for the sun to set on white supremacy. Rest in peace, white supremacy. Rest in peace. Parting is such sorrow. With that, I'm going to jump off of here. This is BGS out, and I will see you guys on the next one. Peace.